キュリアキュリアキュリアキュリアキュリアキュリア Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Aaron and in today's video, I am going to teach you how to do the QDR. The Qued the Dream. Maybe that's how you say it in Portuguese. I don't know. I'm not Portuguese. I'm Australian, but I am learning how to do the QDR. So I'm going to teach you how to do it in this video. Let's go. So why do you even want to learn the QDR? I'll tell you why. Because next time you're at a barbecue, you'll just rip one out in the middle of the barbie and everyone will be like, whoa, look at that guy. And you'll be that guy. You probably, <laughs> you probably guessed, but we need to start with a warm up. This move puts a lot of pressure on the wrists and also the shoulders. So we need to warm up both those body parts before we get started. Let's do it. Okay, so my favorite warm up for the wrists is what I like to call the blower. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay, if you don't have a blower, then maybe try some wrist circles, thumbs together, on the ground, fingers apart, elbow pits facing forwards. I'm on my knees here, and I'm just gonna do some circles. And it puts, it puts the wrists through all the different planes of motion and gives them a good warm up. This is a really good one. Another great warm up I like to do for the hands and wrists are heel raises, which you can do again on your hands and knees, arms locked out, pits of the elbows facing forward, and you lift from the tops of the palms. Okay, so I'll show you how a QDR balance hold looks, balancing on one hand to show you the final movement we're working towards. And then after that, I'll show you the progressions that you use to get there. I also have to give you the disclaimer that I can only get a balance hold on my right arm at the moment and my left arm is still trailing. So I'm working on progressions to get there with the left hand, and I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show you how I'm working through the progressions, where I'm up to, and hopefully you can implement those to work up to a full balance hold on one hand, a full QDR. Okay, so let's take a look at the QDR. There we have it, from a different angle. Now I'll show you my best effort on my left hand. Okay, so let's talk hand and elbow positioning in the QDR. You need to have your, your fingers facing out. You wanna put your elbow on the inside of your hip, like so. And then, when you're in the QDR, you'll internally rotate your trunk and your hip will almost catch on the elbow to create a counter lever. And that's where you find your balance. Everybody's composition is different. Some people have more weight through their legs than their upper torso. So it's going to be slightly different, this sweet spot, this balance point for everyone. On the other side, I don't bend as well on my left, but you need that side flexion. The fingers go out and the elbow goes inside the hip. Taking a look at the hand and elbow placement now from the squat, placing the hands on the ground, we need to Turn one knee inside and place the elbow inside that hip. You can rest your head on the ground for support. So showing you from this side, hands go on the ground. We turning in, head on the ground for support and get that elbow on the inside. And just practice that.
The sun and the shadows are giving me anxiety making this video. Look at this, I'm running out of, I'm running out of sunlight area as the shadow takes over. Very annoying, it's giving me anxiety, man. Once you feel comfortable with the hand and elbow placement, we can move towards a tuck QDR. So I like to take a little bit of a half step in. It makes it a little bit easier. Rotate, put the head down, elbow goes inside the hip, and then try a little tuck. So, like so. Once you're comfortable with the tuck position, we can try with the legs out, with the head support, two hands on the ground. We spin in, leg goes around and sweeps around. That inside knee folds in, the outer knee sweeps out. Head on the ground for support. Like so. This way. Hey, hands on the ground. Head on the ground, elbow inside the hip. The back leg sweeps and the front leg off the ground. Once you're comfortable with the head on the ground with the two hands and legs out straight, we can move on to lifting the head off the ground. So while two hands are still on the ground, I sweep the leg, I have the head support, I can start to lift the head and balance there. Aim for 10 to 15 seconds. Left hand. Ten to fifteen seconds of that. Another angle of the head lifting. And the head support. Feet are out. Head comes up. Ten to fifteen seconds. Well, the shadow's winning. I'm running out of lit area to work with, so I'm just gonna have to work in the dark. Okay, once we're comfortable with the head coming off the ground, we can start to go to the five finger support. So it's the same setup. We can go to the five fingers. Another angle. Guys, with all of these progressions, once you can get to 10 to 15 seconds on each progression, you're probably ready to try the next level up. So just keep that in mind as you work through the progressions. Okay, once you've gone from a firm five finger support, you can start to try and lighten those fingers and then you can start to try and take the thumb away, take the pinky away, get down to two fingers and then just the one finger. So. I'll show you how that looks. Five fingers, take the thumb away. Four fingers, three fingers, two fingers, one finger. And when we get down to one finger, and you can do that for 10 to 15 seconds, we can start to just tap it. We can take it off the ground. Here it is from another angle. The leg sweeps. Fingers in place, the legs out. Take the thumb away, four fingers, three fingers, two fingers, one finger. Tap, tap, <laughs> whoo. 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, once you're starting to float, some tips that really helped me by extending that floating arm out, try to make one line with the extending leg, the sweeping leg, I try to think about rotating my hips up towards the sky and creating tension in one long beam through my body from the arm right through to the sweeping leg as though I'm one of those beams that the tightrope walker people use. Uh, I also try to keep my chest up so that my feet don't fly up into the air which was happening initially and I try to lean into my fingers a little bit just so that you don't fall out of it. So let's just have a look at that again now.
ah, there we are. So, see, I'm really trying to create that tension. It just helps with the balancing initially. Um, so that's pretty much where I'm up to. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you've got something out of it. So I hope there's been some decent cues in there for you. Keep training, keep moving well. I'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. What else can I say about the QDR? Take your time with the progressions. It takes a while. Uh, it took me several months to build up to the full float and then I had a lot of trouble dialing in the balance. So um, it does put a lot of stress on your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder. So just don't be an idiot and overdo it, okay? Just take it easy, take it easy, take it slow, it's no race, okay? Be the tortoise, not the hare.